Hi, how's it going? Uh, I'm On, and uh, this is Ha here, and we're here to give you guys a talk about malware migrating to gaming consoles. Okay, so just a sec. So the title pretty much says it all, but uh, this talk is going to be about how malware can be infected into gaming consoles and the consequences that can follow and some possible defenses that can be taken. And uh, also as a side quest, we're also going to see how gaming devices can be used as attacking, to attacking tools. So uh, to give you guys a picture of what's going on, this talk is going to be about embedded systems and how attackers can use the hardware of these devices to their advantage. And embedded devices have been around for years, so um, the security of this, these devices was only recently recognized um, by the general public. So you can say it's kind of old, but uh, new on the security side. So there's lots of new things still uh, waiting to be discovered on the security side. Um, the thing is, not so many people are fully aware of these issues. So these devices can make a good target for attackers and cause a lot, uh, cause a lot of these devices, particularly smartphones, uh, carry a lot of important personal information. And we're going to discuss about these issues with a couple of real world examples. Uh, actually, a lot of real world examples so we can make this talk a, a little bit more interesting. This is how the presentation is going to be laid out. Uh, the second part is actually going to be divided into two other sections. The first part being uh, how to abuse embedded devices as an attacker. And the second part is malware on gaming console systems. And we're going to start out with a little background knowledge and then move on to the more interesting part of how attackers would use these systems to accomplish their goals. And finally, some possible defensive measures we can take to uh, ruin the attacker's plans. And here comes the obvious part, background knowledge. Uh, the pirate scene of gaming console and uh, smartphones. Now, everyone here should uh, know what piracy is. Uh, it's like common knowledge. Uh, illegally downloading and installing paid software either by hardware or software modifications. And a couple examples are shown on the screen uh, like uh, a hardware modification on the gaming console on the left side and then on the bottom the Nintendo R4 to play free games on the Nintendo DS and uh, everybody's favorite iPhone jailbreak. Uh, okay. Uh, as soon as someone finds a way to bypass the security on a device and make piracy possible, uh, a massive amount of users dump and crack their games and software and distribute it uh, using either torrents, P2P, or web storage like RapidShare. And then they, uh, the download link or torrent is freely distributed to the public so all the general users can download them and uh, this also, this is also how malware is going to be distributed. Um, which I'll discuss about in a moment. And okay, uh, we know that there already is embedded device malware running in the wild for quite a while, but uh, just to give an example of a couple of these, we had on gaming consoles uh, a malware that looks like a homebrew and it actually does have useful features to make people install these homebrew malware, I mean, these homebrew, uh, but the attacker made it so that it had a separate thread running in the background doing uh, lots of other sneaky stuff. And all this is possible because the author of the homebrew application is the author of the malware s uh, itself. So, uh, and he can choose to add whatever functionality he wants, he wants in his own source code. Uh, of course, he would have to release the clean version of the homebrew to the public, but the executable file will have the malware contained inside. And nobody will really recognize unless someone is monitoring, monitoring the network or attempts to reverse engineer the binary, which not so many people do. So uh, the second case is a cracking tool that uh, advertises itself as 
uh, breaking the security of a device, uh, somewhat like jailbreaking, uh, and makes the users run it on their system, but then eventually it just wrecks the machine and breaks the sim system or something like that. And well, these are the two kinds of malware on gaming systems that were uh, publicly discovered so far. And on the other hand, uh, there were quite a few malware on smartphones. A couple of them are presented here. Uh, but I'm sure that there's a lot more that antivirus companies uh, obtain secretly but uh, didn't release to the public. And uh, these are the uh, more popular ones that were m made public on the web. And the iPhone malware targeting default passwords and Windows Mobile Symbian and Black Blackberry malware and there was even a toaster rootkit uh, that Matt Tassano showcased a few years ago. Uh, some people might know. And there's of course the Android rootkit that was discussed uh, here at DEF CON a couple of hours ago. And now uh, let's see what the general public thinks about this situation. And well, thing is, uh, generally users don't even think or want to think that uh, malware runs on these devices because uh, that sort of stuff gives them a headache and they just think about that uh, they just think that the application they're installing right now is completely safe or somewhat safe and then they usually only see that the application is running pro properly with no error or crashes and personally I think I don't think any normal person not related to security in any way will think that malware is running on their device until like a big black screen pops up saying that uh, your, your device has been hacked, uh, roll on floor or something like that. Uh, but anyone who has common sense will try to make a malware as stealthy as possible. So that's one thing that brings a false sense of security to uh, the general users. And however, However, uh, these devices have all the necessary hardware to run malware. So even recent gaming consoles are becoming so much like a computer that it's, be it's becoming questionable whether it's, it's impossible to run malware on these systems. Now the question is, how would an attacker uh, use these systems to their advantage? We'll start off by showing uh, gaming consoles as an attacking tool because the method of generating attacking tools is the base concept of generating malware on gaming consoles. So we're going to start with that. And we already know that gaming consoles have high quality hardware and a lot of people contribute to the gaming console scene, uh, hacking scene, eventually bringing it to the level where homebrew applications for that particular system is possible generating homebrew home applications. So having a complete development environment for homebrew applications, uh, an attacker can uh, effectively create tools that run on the target gaming console system. And the advantage of running these tools on a gaming console is that bringing a gaming console in a corporate or company will uh, make people less cautious than uh, bringing a laptop or a computer because uh, generally people don't think that gaming consoles can be used as an attacking tool. So uh, this is how the uh, scenario, attack scenario goes. Uh, the attacker connects to an internal network in a company and performs any kind of attack possible within the internal network. Uh, and essentially the concept is pretty much the same as attacking an internal network with a smartphone. Uh, but a Nintendo DS is used in the in its place. And now we're going we're going to show a couple examples of what kind of attacks can be performed using these concepts. And the first demo is using Nintendo DS to attack a remote host using a known exploit and compromising the host. So we'll put the camera on screen right now. And This is the Nintendo DS that has all the tools needed for attacking. And it's going to attach to the network with wireless. 
And as you can see, the DS is running games with R4, and we're going to run our homebrew Meta Dsploit, which is already running already. Uh, it's it was inspired from Metasploit, so the name might be a little queer, but uh, anyway, we're going to we're going to search for a usable access point right now, and there's one called IP Time. Uh, if you see an access point with the name IP time, it means nothing's been touched since the router was purchased. So it's mo it most likely uses a default password, so we're going to use that one. And successfully connected. And now, actually, there's, seems to be a problem. Okay. Trying again. Okay. There seems to be some uh, wireless issues here, but but <laughs> this is embarrassing. <laughs> uh, we kind of uh, predicted this would happen, and uh, we hold on a sec. Okay, we're just gonna skip this demo then and go on to the next one. Okay. This this one is uh, a video to show you a live demo. I mean, we can't show you a live demo because uh, live demos take uh, a little long. So uh, a lot of these demos we prepare for videos. Um, and one of these, this is one of the videos. Just a sec. Okay. Uh, uh, this is an attack using ARP spoofing, uh, and we s we assume that uh, this is either a home network or an internal network in a company. And the bottom screen is, whoops, bottom screen is uh, there to remotely access the two computers on the top screen, and. Uh, on the bottom screen, uh, okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, let's try this again. on the bottom screen is used to remotely access the two computers on top. And it's checking that the internet works by ping Google. And we're going to constantly ping the, uh, Google to see that network is up and running. And same goes with the second laptop. Yeah, and the network appears to be running on both computers, and Wireshark will be running to uh, monitor the packets. And now we're going to run the ARP spoofing D DS homebrew. So. Connecting to an access point right now. And starting the attack and
Yeah, 